you know, the, Meg from Ship Bob, she's getting us kicked off. But really, this webinar is about going hybrid, right? And so going hybrid is essentially uh, adding a 3PL to your current internal warehouse fulfillment operation and you know, the process of uh, adding that 3PL like Ship Bob and and then managing the 3PL and warehouse fulfillment logistics with a company like FlexPoint as your distributed order management system. So with that, Meg, I'm going to go through the uh, presentation or at least I'll click through for you. So I'll try to time it with, with, um, with you, but feel free to just let me know as we want to go to the next slides. Perfect. Thanks, Travis. I appreciate it. Hi, everyone. My name is Margaret or Meg Glavy. I'm a solutions partner manager here at ChipBob. I work and uh, manage our relationships with our partners who help us facilitate relationships with retailers um, and other marketplaces online. So FlexPoint kind of really nicely dovetails in some of the, the verticals that I manage with our partners and some of the order management uh, logic that you're able to implement with FlexPoint using ShipBob. Cool, so yeah, so just high level overview of an agenda. What is a 3PL? Uh, we're going to talk about scalability and how you can scale with ShipBob. Um, we're going to talk about sales channels and the expansion opportunities within ShipBob. And then um, just to kind of close it all off, how that all functions together and, and what that could mean for that going hybrid model. So how you can leverage FlexPoint for your order management logic and then what that looks like downstream in ShipBob. Cool. Next slide. Awesome. Yeah. So what is a 3PL? So some of you who have logged on may not know what a third-party logistics program is. So that's exactly what it stands for, third-party logistics. So the idea that you're going to outsource some of your supply chain to a third party. In this case, ShipBob, we are a warehouse management software solution. So if you were to outsource your logistics to ShipBob, that means that we can pick, pack, and send out the orders on your behalf. But you know, a 3PL solution might look different for every different company. In this case, the way that we set up is that we connect your online store through to our WMS, to our dashboard. You send us the inventory, and then we ship that to the end customer. So um, in the case of, you know, adding something like a flex point in or sort of additional um, software, that can happen between the connection between your, your store and ShipOps WMS. Um, but like I said, that can take many different forms depending on how you've configured your 3PL setup. Um, you can go next slide. Cool. Yeah, so when deciding that your business might be big enough to start working with a third-party logistics, um, usually kind of the example that we'll give is, let's say someone who is selling t-shirts online starts getting enough orders that, um, you know, X number of orders is suddenly too much to self-fulfill. So if you're selling out of your basement or your garage, and suddenly there's such an influx of of orders that you yourself can no longer manage that volume, that's a great opportunity and great time to outsource, um, especially a brand that's experiencing massive growth. Let's say if their you know, social media blows up or they go viral in some capacity, then that's a great opportunity to really look into how a 3PL can help scale and manage some of that influx of order volume. So, um, you know, exp especially also expanding to international markets. So, um, you know, if you're interested, if you're selling in the U.S., but you're interested in working in additional markets, whether that be EU, Australia, um, et cetera, then expanding to someone that has a capacity to fulfill those orders and can help you navigate those markets is really, really beneficial. Um, something I also do want to call out is, is, you know, a time that you might be interested in outsourcing your fulfillment to a 3PL is to really take advantage of the purchasing power of larger brands who power the 3PL's revenue. So in the case of ShipBob, over 40% of our, um, you know, our client base is what we consider to be mid, mid market. So a brand that's, you know, five plus GMB in revenue, that means that we're you know, that order volume coming in allows us to negotiate better carrier, better carrier rates. Um, and so you're able to um, get cheaper pricing and cheaper and faster pricing to your end customer because you're leveraging all of ShipBob's client base when, um, you know, negotiating with the carriers instead of doing that yourself. So that can be really beneficial as well. Yep, next slide. Cool. 
Uh, yeah, so it's, like I said, three panels are your key to scale. So if any of that sounds interesting to you, so if you're thinking, hey, we're getting too big, we want better, cheaper rates, we want faster shipping, we want to be able to take care of, take advantage of a larger network, then three PLs is really would be your key to expanding and scaling your business. So in the case of ShipBob, we do have operations in the U.S., but we also have operations in Canada, EU, UK, and Australia. So a one all-in-one WMS solution that allows you to access those markets as long as you send us that inventory, that can be really helpful if you're looking to expand internationally. Um, lower upfront investment to test new markets. So again, it's just as simple as sending us the inventory and the dashboard kind of does the rest. As long as your store is equipped to take orders from new markets or new spaces, then you know we can accept those orders and ship that out to your end customer. That includes retail distribution, drop shipping, um, you know, whatever source you're working with, we can accept those orders and that can be aggregated together. So instead of managing multiple different solutions, then, you know, you can work with FlexPoint to implement logic to send certain orders to, you know, certain locations or to your 3PL versus your self-fulfillment option. And that's something that we're well equipped to handle. Um, scalable packaging solutions to support sustainability. So if you're a sustainably minded brand, which is something that we see increasingly being a, you know, at the forefront of some of the brands that we're working with in terms of how they wanna see their 3PL address um, sustainability, then we work with a number of sustainable packaging solutions. It's also, you know, you can uh, reduce the overhead costs or maybe the over ordering associated with discounts for Corrigan. Um, by using a 3PL. And finally, B2B orders. So I'm sure, you know, some of you that have logged on are curious about um, how we work with retailers and drop shippers. So managing, as some of you may know, managing relationships with retailers and drop shippers can be really complicated because they have so many requirements when it comes to compliance. So ShipBob, and we'll get into this in a little bit when I talk more about B2B, but ShipBob being someone who kind of deals in the day-to-day -day with uh, orders to those retailers, that it can be really helpful to have someone to manage that compliance and have that outsourced to someone else. So you're not the one that's reading through the compliance guides and making sure that all of the requirements are being met for um, the retailer that you're working with. Instead, you can kind of rely on a, a third party to manage that for you. Next slide. Cool. Yeah, distributed inventory closer to your customers. So the idea of working with a 3PLs network is really crucial to being able to offer faster and cheaper shipping. So um, let's say you have a warehouse that's in, you own and operate one warehouse, wherever that may be in the US, that's probably at a further point from your a customer that might be on the opposite coast or might be in a different region. Um, but so by distributing your inventory, you can take advantage of being closer to a lot of your customers, which means that you can reduce the cost and um, the shipping time associated with getting that product to the end customer. So, you know, whether it's you're using all of ShipBob's network or you have a piecemeal model where you have a warehouse that you're owning and operating and functioning and sending it to ShipBob some of your inventory, um, we can accommodate that. So, um, you know, we have 30 plus warehouses within the U.S. alone. So every region and subregion is covered. Um, so you can really, you know, take advantage of decrease shipping costs and lower transport related costs um, by distributing your inventory. Next slide. <laughs> and this is kind of a high level overview of what pricing looks like with ShipBob. So the idea that, um, you know, we price out by zones, similar to kind of how every major carrier in the US um, situates their pricing, but just understanding that by distributing your inventory, you usually can get cheaper pricing within closer zones. So, you know, in an ideal scenario, back from my account management days, I'd say that you want to be within zone one, three. So that means, you know, if your customers, if you've got customers in Chicago, in New York, and in LA, then you're going to want to have a warehouse location in those three regions, at least. Um, and so kind of always monitoring where your customers are and what your costs are. And that's something that you're able to leverage also with a 3PL. You know, the idea that we have a dashboard that allows you to get that high level overview of what your shipping costs are, your number of customers in each zone, 
that data is all yours. You own it and you can manipulate it. So it's just empowering you to make decisions about reducing your shipping costs and overall logistics costs. Just to kind of overview, to call back to where we have locations. So like I said, plenty of locations in the US. We also have locations in Canada, UK, EU, and Australia. So, and we have teams that can help you expand into those markets too. So tax considerations, VAT, um, importation, et cetera. Um, we have teams that can help you kind of facilitate and navigate those markets. So um, once your inventory is there, it's just as simple as getting it out to the end customer. Cool. <laughs> and something kind of cool that I think differentiates ShipBob with that distributed inventory piece is our two-day shipping. So um, we have we'll offer product badging on Shopify, and we're also a certified two-day partner with Walmart. So if you sell on Walmart Marketplace, then we're certified two-day. And you can also use two-day badging on your Shopify store. So um, you can convert more shoppers by the reducing cart abandonment when they see that two-day shipping um, offer. So as we kind of all know, that's the expectation, you know, Amazon that's set for the customer market. Um, Amazon has set for customers, I should say, um, faster shipping. So that's something that we have high visibility around and we offer our customers. Cool. Um, <clears throat> and then finally, digitizing warehouse management. So for those of you who self-fulfill and may not use a warehouse management software, or they may use just a general, um, you know, market, you know, generally available WMS for self-fulfillment. I think digitizing warehouse management is a really key piece to this. So making sure that you always have products in stock at the various warehouses that you need them in stock, um, the offer or the ability to split orders if orders aren't necessarily in stock in certain warehouses, all of that sort of order logic. I think that's a really key piece where FlexPoint and ShipBob meet. So <laughs> the idea that using and leveraging a tool like FlexPoint to quote unquote go hybrid, meaning, you know, set order rules based on, hey, if an order's coming in and there's inventory in this warehouse, let's fulfill from that warehouse or we can fulfill from the ship up warehouse. That's all something that you can set up. But by, by having digitized warehouse management and kind of a clear picture at all times of what your inventory is doing and how much you have in stock, you can better rely on those rules to function properly. Cool, sales chain expansion opportunities. Yeah, so you can reach your customers everywhere. So expanding new challenges or new channels without the sort of challenge of kind of getting set up and setting, you know, having a separate fulfillment and logistics arm for each channel. That's a real key differentiator with ShipBob. So the fact that we work with Amazon, we work with Walmart and we're facilitating orders to major retailers, whether it be retail distribution or drop shipping. Um, you can truly reach your customers everywhere using ShipBob. Um, and what's great about that is really, it's up to you to chop and change how you want that to look. So again, using an ever and leveraging an order management software like a FlexPoint that allows you to send orders to certain instances, to certain warehouses, to with certain rules, then you kind of can completely expand and scale on your terms. Um, so, yep, yeah, next slide. And then, yeah, final piece is the B2B commerce. So just to call back what I said about our availability and our work that we do with B2B brands. So beyond the D2C portion, you know, the fact that we can connect to your Shopify store, the WooCommerce store, et cetera, we also work with retailers. So whether that be dropship or with retail distribution. So we rely on some partners that help us with their EDI translations. So including also a flex point, who can help you with your order management software to ingest these types of orders. So how wholesale B2B works at ShipBob is that we like connect those orders, come through, um, they come through to our warehouse management software and we manage all the compliance and the requirements around labeling, around picking and packing, around transportation, et cetera. So you can really truly outsource that arm of your business and just add retailers at will. So, you know, if you're seeing a lot of success in one retailer, that really begets, usually tends to beget success in another. So we don't want to hinder you in that process. We want you to be able to expand as rapidly as you'd like. So that's something that's available to you at ShipBob. And, and something is available to you when you outsource your fulfillment. Cool. OK, 
Okay. Well, I think I've probably done, you know, enough to pitch you on Chip Bob and the idea of going hybrid. Um, it's the, yeah, your all in one solution. So, oops, sorry, I think I'm losing. I don't know where I was. Sorry. <laughs> yep. Perfect. Thanks. Um, yeah. So just there's the high level overview. I think, you know, it's, it's your old, it's old hat at this point. Um, next slide. So, and what I want to do call out from the idea of like a partner ecosystem and going hybrid. So we do work with at this point over, you know, 50 tech companies that can serve sort of any purpose that you have when it comes to your fulfillment to the end customer, whether that be packaging, whether that be order management software, whether that be customer support, et cetera. Um, we have a pretty robust partner ecosystem that meets every need. Cool. And something I do want to call out, um, you know, as we talk to more and more brands that are interested in going hybrid, um, you know, we want you to be able to leverage ShipBob solutions to achieve the more accurate, efficient, and affordable fulfillment. So you can use a fully outsourced model with us. So whether that means that you put all of your inventory into our warehouses and have that managed yourself, or you use our Merchant Plus solution, which is when we um, give you our WMS system to use in your own fulfillment network and your own warehouse. So, you know, if you own and operate a space and you want to be able to have that and keep that within your stack, great. That's something that we can absolutely facilitate, especially with, um, you know, in tandem with FlexPoint, which allows you to implement some of that order management software. So you're able to choose which orders you'd like to fulfill yourself and which ones you'd like to outsource to ship Bob. And then if you, you know, happen to own and operate your own space, we have a WMS solution for you. Cool. And a little just about our client base. So 70% of brands will add new sales channels in 2022. So the fact that, you know, over two thirds of our brands are interested in adding new sales channels and see that as something that we can help them facilitate with, facilitate for them, I think says it all. Um, and then, you know, over two thirds of our brands are already selling on two or more sales channels. Um, and we, we truly see like the sky's the limit, right? If you're interested in taking on new sales channels, new retailers, like we can help you with that. Um, especially if you're looking for a set and forget it solution, you're looking to implement logic to have this all be humming away in the background while you're interested in growing and building your brand. That's something that we can absolutely help facilitate. Cool. And some kind of interesting um, case studies that we published on our website, especially around expansion and a hybrid model. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Travis. Awesome. Thanks, Meg. Appreciate that. Um, some definitely some interesting stuff there, and awesome to see really how ShipBob's grown over the last couple of years, and and all the offerings that you guys have rolled out, and really helping brands compete with that that two day kind of requirement that Amazon has set, like you you kind of mentioned. So. Great to see that. Awesome. So our portion of the uh, webinar really is kind of just, you know, educational on the, the concept of hybrid and different fulfillment models and talking about how, you know, not only FlexPoint can help in those, but just thinking about the strategies in general and, and where ShipBob and FlexPoint kind of fit in. So obviously, if you join this webinar, you're most likely fulfilling uh, orders in-house from your own warehouse, maybe a brick and mortar, whatever it might be. But you're doing what we call internal fulfillment, right? The, tr the traditional purchasing of um, goods wholesale, putting them in your own internal warehouse, uh, maybe in a storage unit if you're SMB or you get your own uh, distribution center or multiple distribution centers if you're larger and you're just shipping them out with your own team, pick, pack, ship, maybe a warehouse management system in the middle, right? So uh, that's what we consider internal fulfillment, pretty straightforward. Hybrid fulfillment really is the concept of when you are now fulfilling both internally and from a third party, uh, like a 3PL, like a ship bob. Um, and so that obviously as you can see, there's that splitting, there's that routing, there's kind of that complexity that gets added there. Uh, there's a lot of reasons why you might want to do it. Um, there's, there's a lot of reasons why you might not want to do it. And, uh, and so we're going to kind of go through those. But first, I want to just from a terminology perspective, I do want to talk about, you know, how we're kind of looking at the market and as we're seeing more and more 
companies kind of rise like like a ship bob that offers these these great kind of solutions for for brands to do their own fulfillment but also to be a drop shipper for retailers um you know we're seeing from a from a retailer perspective this this concept of more and more distributed fulfillment where it's, it might be you know you're fulfilling from an internal warehouse you might be fulfilling from a 3pl but the concept of distributed fulfillment is really when you have order orchestration or order routing needs where you could fulfill one order or one item from multiple locations. Um, this is really, this gets really sophisticated, even past just like a typical hybrid fulfillment where you, you know, no matter what, you know that this order is always going to go to the one warehouse, or the other warehouse. You might have some of your SKUs in, um, let's say, like the large, uh, heavy SKUs in your own internal warehouse, and then the light parcel SKUs in, uh, in ShipBob, right? That's, that's fairly simple. You can easily split that off. Distributed fulfillment is where you might have multiple um, options to fulfill an order where you've got the exact same products across multiple locations within ShipBob, within your own internal warehouse, maybe your brick and mortar. Um, if you're a retailer, uh, you know, maybe you've got drop ship partners that are also drop shipping the same items that you've purchased and put in your warehouse or in your 3PL. And so when that happens, uh, distributed fulfillment is really about the idea of looking across all of those different locations and then running through a distributed order management system like FlexPoint and making uh, some rules really around like how you want to fulfill those, whether it's the cheapest, lowest cost, preferred solution, right? Whatever it might be, a combination of all three of those. Um, that's really the, the distributed fulfillment kind of terminology that you're seeing show up more and more uh, managed through like a distributed order management system. And so you know, the hybrid side of things. So just to keep it simple, right? Of just the, the two solutions here, right? The internal warehouse, and the 3PL, you've, you've decided that, you know, I've, I've got my own warehouse. I need to start looking at, does a 3PL make sense for me? And, and all those reasons that Meg outlined earlier in her portion of the presentation. Um, you know, really one way to think about it though is, you know, why? Why do I want to go, why do I want to keep one warehouse and not go fully to ship Bob or another 3PL where I think that's if, if Meg, you know, I believe she mentioned it a day or two ago when we we're getting ready, but most people actually do mo move most of their, if not all of their operations over when they move to a, a 3PL like ship Bob, but why would you want to keep your own internal warehouse? So there's a couple of reasons that we've outlined here. So you might be just adding a 3PL for just the regional or international shipping as, as Meg said earlier, right? That you've got your warehouse, you, you feel like it, it makes sense for you guys. You really just need the West Coast taken care of, and and you're looking for a strategic partner to help out with that. Or, as as Meg mentioned, right? There's different uh, implications moving internationally. You got to deal with different taxes and rules and logistics, and so you're just adding them solely for that. So you want to keep your warehouse because you've got you got things going well there, whatever it might be, and you just want to expand internationally or regionally. That might be a hybrid scenario. Let's say that you're not doing anything too crazy. You're not trying to go outside the country, um, but you do feel like you want to add uh, <clears throat> another warehouse because you've taken on new, new uh, specific products that you're not set up to, um, to offer, right? From a logistics perspective. Maybe you're a, a retail grocer or a DTC brand that's expanding out your SKUs into something that you're not used to shipping out or storing. Uh, freezer uh, good items or large bulky items um, whatever it might be like freight items, you know, something that you are not used to selling, right? You could be used to selling your, uh, you know, non-perishable goods. If you're a grocer and you've got that dialed in, you're selling, um, canned goods, whatever. And then you start offering freezer items and, and refrigerated items, and you don't have the capacity to, uh, keep that in the warehouse or send it out into a, a truck that can support that, right? That's an option where you're like, okay, I'm going to keep my own specific shipping for my, my non-perishables, but then all the freezer items, all the refrigerated items, I'm going to work with a specialty 3PL uh, to do that. So that's another scenario we've seen. And then there's the opposite of that, right? There's the opposite of where you've got this kind of like just-in-time kitting and bundling or you know, kind of uh, a scenario where you're basically assembling things in your own um, warehouse, you feel like you've got that dialed in. You've looked at our three PLs, and and maybe Meg, we can talk about uh, towards the end. That's a question that pops up in my mind. If you guys do any kind of the assembly or kitting and bundling, and 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 identify if Ship Bob can help there or not. But let's say that you've looked across. You said I've got my secret sauce and how I put this stuff together, and uh, I want to keep that in house. But I want to start off actually offering finished goods as well, and I want to outsource that portion because 
you know, that part doesn't really make sense for our team to spend all that time on just pick, pack, and shipping the finished goods. That's easy. Let's out let's out, outsource that to a 3PL, but let's keep the kitting and bundling, the assembly, the, you know, the, the custom print on demand stuff or whatever it might be that you're doing in-house. Let's keep that in-house. So another hybrid scenario where that makes sense to, to have both. Um, and then, yeah, there's just a simple the business side of things where you want to add a 3PL, but you're in a contract uh, and, and you're, uh, you can't really get out of your warehouse contract. You, you need to be there, and, um, but you know you want to go long-term to a 3PL um, in the future, and, and you're just going to start making that move now, but you're going to keep yours in, in, in place for, for the time being. And then this kind of goes with that last bullet. Maybe you're just also not sure. You're dipping your toe in the water with a 3PL. We want to test them out. You want to make sure that two-day deliveries is happening, um, and you're hedging your bets. And so you can set up a hybrid type scenario where you still have your warehouses in place. You're not firing all your warehouse workers. You're not getting rid of your WMS. You're not ending your contract, but you are testing out and moving to a 3PL uh, to see for if it's going to make sense for the long term. So there's all the reasons why you might want to move to 3PL. And there's a lot of reasons why um, you might want to do it in a hybrid way, like I just outlined, or just move fully as Meg outlined earlier. But as you do that, here are a couple of things you want to be looking out for, right? So the splitting of orders. If you do have, say you decide in that packaged goods or that, that non-perishable versus like freezer item scenario where uh, you're not carrying the exact same SKUs across multiple uh, locations, right? The 3PL carries one set of SKUs, your own warehouse carries the other SKUs. Same thing with like the kidding and bundling. There's no product overlap as we call it here at FlexPoint. Um, splitting orders is, is fairly simple. You still do need something to sit in the middle like a FlexPoint or an order management system to, to split that. Um, you know, but even some of the more basic carts can do it if you're just splitting off items that only exist in one location. However, the second you have overlap, and you have the same exact item, the exact same SKU located in multiple locations, you will need what we call distributed fulfillment. You'll need like a distributed order management system like FlexPoint to make that decision on where it should go um, and, and how to route it. And you know, you should think through all those use cases too. Uh, we actually just went through in our, one of our lunch and learns earlier today uh, of our routing tool and, and our order orchestration tool and talked about some really um, complex use cases where some SKUs, you always prefer a certain warehouse, unless it's under this certain cost. Um, if a different SKU might be over a certain weight, you know, route it differently, even if it's cheaper, you know, there's all those little things that you might want to think through all your business use cases that you have. Think about them, write them down. When you go evaluate the software, or the systems you want to work with, um, you know, make sure to walk through each one of those use cases. If you can, if you can start where you just have separate items, um, and don't have a SKU overlap to start, maybe as you make that shift to a hybrid model, it's not a bad idea. And then slowly start thinking about how to um, move to a distributed, fully distributed model with overlap in your products across locations. Um, and then, yeah, so I kind of touched on number two here already, optimal order routing, right? So think about those use cases. What does that mean? Uh, we see scenarios where it's always the same algorithm. You always want to look for the cheapest. And if it's within a certain margin of, of a percentage of um, cost, move on to the next where it's like the closest or whatever it might be, it might be the same. But we see sophisticated use cases where, okay, we'll do that. But unless it's coming from California, if it's coming from California or the order is being shipped to California, um, make these other considerations where I don't care if it's the cheapest or the closest, it needs to go to this warehouse, right? We see that with like Prop 65 is like a, a chemical and, um, you know, it's a compliance kind of requirement in California where, you know, you can't ship items um, from, you know, that are, that are from a, a California order uh, can't be shipped out of like the California state, right? And so you have to ship from a, a different location in general. So uh, things like that, if you have sophisticated use cases, definitely walk through those with your OMS or your distributed order management system um, solution consultant. Integrations. Uh, as you look at, you know, ShipBob has a lot of plug and play integrations. Um, you know, that's they, whether they're integrating to us or all the other partners that they mentioned, um, you know, Shopify and things like that, right? Look at what's integrated, how quickly, if it's not integrated yet, how quickly can it get integrated? Um, and just really identify that that might be an added cost if it's not already to go. And then also understanding what is the integration, what does it look like, right? What fully passes back and forth from integration? Does it support your use case? Uh, do you need custom fields or custom data being moved back and forth 
you know, country of origin and, and different data points like that, um, make sure to walk through those. When it comes to optimizing inventory available in location, ShipBob does help with that for intern in their internal warehouses. That I've, from what I've heard, they do a great job with, like like Meg said, you know, putting the right inventory in the right location so that you are, you know, zone skipping or optimizing the zone uh, shipping. Right. So uh, doing all of that is, is is you know in the ecosystem of ShipBob is great. If you do have now decisions to make across your internal warehouse, um, the ShipBob locations. And then also drop shippers or brick and mortars, you know, you will want to bring those into one system, um, be able to run the right reports to look at sales, understand where your customer's at, and understand where they're usually fulfilling those items from. And so running kind of that business intelligence on, on the inventory management when it's across multiple different systems the different locations, that's a consideration if you haven't done it before, that you'll want to make sure you talk to your software provider about and, and how that would look. Transfer orders. Typically easy, once again, everything's easy in one ecosystem, whether it's your own internal warehouse ecosystem or your own 3PL ecosystem, everything's under ShipBob. So the second you go hybrid, uh, it, it makes things difficult, right? And there's reasons to do it, but in, in all honesty, things are much more difficult because you're having multiple systems talk to each other. Um, the idea of moving things from your own warehouse into FBA or moving your things into your own from your own warehouse into ShipBob or from ShipBob to FBA or whatever it might be, that's the reality that we see from a lot of brands and a lot of retailers. And so, um, you know, think about that that flow. Make sure you know. Hopefully, use this like these six points here as like a uh, checklist when you if you do go look to go hybrid and, and implement this and then look for software to support it. You know, transfer orders is something you don't want to overlook. What does it look like if I want to just bulk move my order or I'm sorry my items? From one warehouse to another can you support that is it seamless can i track it can i understand when it's coming in um, all of those data points are important to run your business and then uh, at the end of the day right the financial side so tracking and optimizing the fulfillment costs um, when it's hybrid you're going to have different you're going to have costs uh, in one system you're going to have costs in another system you know, there's probably pick pack fees and things like that that might come from third party logistics companies. You've got your own cogs and your own overhead and, and warehouse team fees when it comes to um, your own internal warehouse. Drop shippers, a lot of times they charge a drop ship fee and, you know, they, it might be dynamic. They might charge you if you're a retailer that's drop shipping, you might be um, get a fee if it's if you only send an order for less than fifty dollars. But if it's over fifty dollars, they don't charge you a drop ship fee. So how do you account for that? Do you have a system that treats drop ship as a first class citizen and pulls those fees in and allows you to kind of write workflow rules to account for that situation I just mentioned? All those kinds of things should come into consideration. Um, the idea is that you really do want to try to pull back. A, a split out order across multiple locations. You send one to ship Bob, you send one to a drop shipper, you send one to your internal warehouse, you know, all from one order. If you split that out three ways, how do you get the cost back into one system to now analyze the profitability of that order, right? And then also analyze the profitability of each individual fulfillment you sent of those three scenarios. And so, you know, that's what a distributed order management system should do, should help with, at least have the data there for you. Uh, that and should have a, a robust and open API if you want to make that uh, financial decision and that analysis and something like you know um, some kind of BI tool right or your ERP. So that's the last one that you'll definitely want to consider if you want to make sure you're optimizing your business for uh, profitability. So hopefully those those six really kind of helped out with uh, you know your consideration on you know maybe I want to start. Moving over to a 3PL, testing it out. I can't fully move all of my goods over to, to ship Bob today. I need to split the uh, the orders. And I need to kind of have a hybrid approach. You know, how do I actually start even evaluating if that makes sense for me and what software I need and what workflows I need to consider? So that was really our hope with the webinar and, you know, having to open it up to, to questions here. Thank you so much, Travis. Yeah, looks like we've got some questions in the chat. Um, and I do want to call it, I think Travis, you did a great job of sort of calling out some of the key points that I brought up. And I do want to briefly clarify that when it comes to specific and kind of case by case basis around what your fulfillment needs are, Shabab 
there's we probably are able to support it. So if you need cold pack or you need certain kitting or whatever it may be, we can usually support. And that rules engine and, and that hybrid approach of sending certain or orders to certain warehouses is absolutely something we can support and knowing which order type to go to which warehouse, depending on what their um, value prop is, is something that we can we can absolutely um, take into consideration. So in terms of questions, it looks like we have a question from Anthony with um, deal, uh, we deal with seasonal spikes. So my warehouse gets bogged down. Can FlexPoint help with automatically sharing the load of orders between my warehouse and a 3PL? Sure, yeah, I see that one too. Oh yeah, uh, so I mean, when it comes to sharing the load of orders between my warehouse and 3PL, um, yeah, I mean, there's there's no doubt that, you know, in general, we're going to route it through FlexPoint in the optimal way. Um, the second that, if we're talking about the scenario where you've got a spike, um, you know, the, the thought there really is, <clears throat> is it out of stock in one warehouse, potentially? Um, you know, I, I don't know. That's almost a question I'd have to ask Ship Bob real quick. Like, there's probably not a, you You guys handle spikes, right? So we really wouldn't have to, as long as it's in stock and ship, Bob, we would just send those directly to you. There's no like, hey, let's slow it down and send some others to my other warehouse. Um, not necessarily, right? Like as long as it's in there and it's the most optimal location to fulfill it from, we're going to want to send all those orders to ship, Bob. Is that, is that fair, Meg? Yeah, totally fair. So as long as the inventory feed is set up so that you know where your inventory is compared to your warehouse and ship, Bob. So if you're if it's out of stock at your warehouse and we know that all the inventory is in stock in ShipBob, we can absolutely handle those fluctuations. So, um, you know, concerns especially around the holidays or seasonal spikes. You know, we have a lot of fitness and wellness products, so January tends to be a really really busy time for some of our client base. So right now we're dealing with spikes in that market in that arena. So absolutely, and the way that our our WMS is set up is to automatically prioritize the closest warehouse to the end customer. So if you have distributed across ShipUp's network, if your end customer happens to be in California and you have warehouse, you have inventory in a warehouse in California, we'll ship it from the California warehouse to save you that money. Um, yeah. So, it, yeah. They bring, up, they bring up a good point here too, which, you know, just in general, as you evaluate software that might sit in between you and ship bob right where the sale happens in you know, your shopify store or wherever in ship bob you know in those spikes you need to make sure that the the middleware the the order management system that's in the middle can can handle the order volume from an api perspective and can and can route it through um and doesn't get bogged down or slow down and, and it goes directly to ship bob and there's not any kind of throttling so you know, I would definitely, as you evaluate software, talk about their API, talk about the throttling, talk about the order, the customers that they have right now today and how what their order spikes look like. Um, that's definitely something we've, we've seen brands come to us and say, hey, our current infrastructure can't handle when an influencer decides to put us up on their, their TikTok or Instagram or wherever it might be. And then we get this huge influx of orders. So another consideration as you look at software out there to make sure they can handle not only from fulfillment like ShipBob can, but also from a technical API throttling perspective. Cool. All right. I think that, let's see if we have any others. I don't see any others in there. Uh, we still have a couple of people hanging around. If you've got any questions, feel free to throw them in. We're going to jump here if we don't see any others out there. Looks like we did have just one come in. Uh, we are a drop shipper of auto parts. Um, looks like it got cut off halfway in the question. Angelo, if you can, uh, looks like half your questions there. Want to increase is where it ends. Okay, let's just assume um, drop shipper of enterprise. We want to increase our listings. Can we use FlexPoint or ShipBob? Um, yes. Yeah, so if you're the retail drop shipper and, and you have auto parts, so it's funny that you, you say this, Angela, right? So I, I literally just got off a customer call this morning. Um, they work on commercial vans, you know, like HVAC and um, different like kind of commercial business vans where they supply them with somewhat auto parts in some cases and, and other equipment along the way. Um, and he, he is the retailer in this scenario and he works with brands. And so the way that they they use ShipBob 
Uh, and they also use us. Um, it was before, you know, they've, they've actually built their own, their integrations, but um, they have ShipBob, they have FlexPoint. And <clears throat> the way they use both of us is they will integrate all of their dropship suppliers with, with FlexPoint by using our no-code mapping tool, our EDI specs, our API integration, maybe our Shopify to FlexPoint integration to pull in their vendor Shopify inventory directly into FlexPoint. So they use that for their, let's say, I think 10 to 12 vendors. And then I saw he had the ShipBob uh, source integrated as well. And I asked him what he was using that for. And the first thing he said, he said a couple of reasons, but the first thing he said was we had a manufacturer that had a really great set of products that just could not fulfill in time. They just could not uh, keep up to the two to three day kind of promise that we give to our customers. And so we said, you know what? We know we've got demand here. Let's just buy these wholesale and let's put them in a, a third party warehouse. He said 95% of their stuff's drop ship, um, but they're actually increasing more and more of the, the inventory they're putting in ship, Bob, for as they learn more on what the demand is for the certain products they know they're going to be able to sell. And so he used that for, um, for that reason specifically and, and, and really mainly. Um, and so that was the main reason that they couldn't fulfill uh, on the SLA that they had given their customers. And the secondary reason was once they started doing it and they vetted it, and they said, this is working, they just wanted more margin. And so even if the dropshipper might be able to fulfill within the SLA of two days or three days, they went and were starting to buy wholesale for their top sellers. And they were putting those in ship Bob as well to make more margin per order. So those are the two reasons or two ways you would use kind of both of us in that scenario. All righty. Meg, anything else from your side? I think we, we touched on a good bit today. Yeah, we covered a wide, wide swath. So thank you so much, Travis, for hosting. Thanks, everyone, for attending. Yeah, thanks, everyone, for attending. Uh, Melanie, Caroline, thanks for putting it on for us. And uh, yeah, we'll be sending this out as a recording as well. And feel free to follow up over email with any questions.